Welcome back. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk applications. So there are a lot of applications of PWM. Uh, some of the ones that we're going to focus on is obviously the piezo because we use it for music, right? Um, light intensity, so you can actually adjust the intensity of, a, of an LED. Not something you'd use a lot, but it's easy to show on our green board, so we're going to make a demo there. The big one that people use it for uh, is actually motor speed. Uh, that's the that's the real reason that PWM exists. Um, and then we're also going to talk about could you use it for servos, um, theoretically, but in practice. Um, so we're going to talk about servos. Uh, so let's go ahead and kind of talk about those four. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to do an example. Uh, so I like to do examples for everything. So let's go ahead and let's modify our previous example to where we not only open PWM1, but we also open PWM2. Um, and PWM2 is going to come out RC1. There's an LED on there, um, and it'll be a nice thing to test with, right? So you can leave your other code. There's no real harm in it. But what I want to do is I want to use the ADC reading uh, to tell me how bright to make the LED, right? So if we're going to use the ADC, we better make sure the library's in. It is. Great. I'm going to make a couple uh, variables here that we can use. Uh, so I'm just going to make one called horizontal uh, joystick and one for vertical uh, joystick. In this video lecture, we're going to only use vertical joystick, but I thought I would make the other in advance. So the thing you have to do for uh, ADC readings is you, of course, have to finish with uh, read ADC. Before that, though, I mean, you can consult your notes. Uh, you have to set uh, the ADC channel. So I want ADC channel uh, 0, 1, 3, <laughs> I think is the right one for the, for the joystick. And then I'm going to say, wow, um, you know, busy ADC. So while it's busy, do nothing. Oops, I forgot to say convert. It's much easier to copy paste these from somewhere else than to remember what they are. Uh, but those should give me the vertical joystick reading. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that uh, to set the duty cycle of PWM2. So I'm just going to get an ADC reading of my vertical joystick. And I'm going to use that to set the duty cycle of the, uh, of the LED. So if you go ahead and run it with this. Um, it won't look like much on the video, but I'll describe what it is I'm doing. Um, once it's running, you can move the, uh, the joystick up uh, to increase the brightness uh, or down to decrease the brightness. You'll kind of notice that at some point, say about 50%, it's as bright as it's going to get. Um, so you can turn it on more and you don't really notice. But you can definitely see if you're sensitive at the lowers, um, it'll kind of fade its way out. So LED intensity, not something you care about much, but it is something you can do. Uh, just for giggles, let's also use that reading uh, to turn on and off the buzzer, which is attached to PWM1. Uh, so if we go ahead and run this, what it'll do is that it'll also control the PWM that goes to the buzzer. The buzzer is kind of different. It either tenses or relaxes uh, based on whether it's getting like you know, a high or a low signal. Um, so it's not really volume per se. So mine's running now here. Um, so at some point it cuts out. And then at some point it's normal volume. And if you go to the other extreme, it'll cut out there too. So there's really kind of some middle ground that works well. Um, and there's kind of a spot that's louder. Uh, so the way I actually do the, the buzzer is I set it to either um, off or on. I usually use on as 10%, which is right about there, um, or I use off, which is 0%. You could also do off of 100%. It would be the same thing, uh, but I typically do it the other way. So I just kind of threw that in there for fun. Uh, we'll, we'll do some more with the buzzer in the next video lecture, uh, but that was all I wanted to do with it for now. Let's talk about some of these other implementations. So that's the buzzer and the lights. Those are easy. Uh, let's talk about motor control. So motor control, the way you control the speed of a motor is by changing the voltage that it sees. So here's a little chart. 
Um, and this motor says that if you're running at 2.75 volts, um, I'm going to give you a speed of about, I don't know, let's call it 3,700 RPMs. And if you set your voltage up here, at, say four and a half volts, you know, then I will give you about 7,500 RPMs, right? Changing your voltage is hard. Uh, there's actually no way on a pick to do it, right? You do not send an analog out. Uh, but it turns out that if you are sending a signal, um, let's say you're controlling a MOSFET and that MOSFET's driving it at 12 volts. Um, if you turn on that MOSFET at 100%, it gets 12 volts. If you turn it on at a 50% duty cycle, um, that effectively looks like six volts right so and 10% effectively looks like you know 1.2 volts um, and 90% looks like I don't know somewhere around 11 volts um, so it turns out that if you turn it on and off fast enough you can simulate having an analog output um, it does two things really well first it changes the speed of the motor that's the main thing right so you can actually like turn your motors faster or slower quite quite accurately the other thing it does, which is awesome, is it actually is better than sending an analog signal because an analog signal would give the motor less torque. By doing it this way, turning it on at full blast and then off, you're changing the speed, but you actually get the full torque of the motor. Um, and the momentum, the mechanical momentum is enough that so long as you're turning it on and off, let's say faster than like 10 hertz, um, you will never see the pulsing, right? Because it's got enough momentum that it'll just look continuous and smooth. Um, and so PWM is awesome for controlling the speed of a DC motor. There was one other application I mentioned on the front page, and that was a servo motor. A servo motor, like it's like designed to where you feel like it definitely should use PWM because a servo motor is a square wave, right? Um, there are 20 milliseconds between rising edges. And the way you control its position, this is review, is you, you might give it um, all the way to the left with a one millisecond high time and then all the way to the right with a two millisecond high time. And that should be totally doable, right? Because this is like a 10% duty cycle, um, you know, which would be like 102. Um, and then this one should be like a 5% duty cycle, uh, which, you know, is like a 51. Um, and then you would give it a number between 51 and 102 to control the position and it should work really well. I'm gonna tell you now, the implementation of our PWM library function doesn't work perfectly. Sorry, <laughs> um, it just doesn't work perfectly. So we actually will not choose to control servo motors with a PWM line. We're gonna control servo motors with a timer interrupt uh, that goes off every 20 milliseconds. So every 20 milliseconds you get, you know, you're told, hey, now should be the time for the rising edge. And in lab, what we're going to do is we're going to do something lame. We're going to just do a delay uh, in here. Um, and then the delay is going to keep it high for that long. And then afterwards, it's going to exit uh, and go low, right? The reason that's kind of lame is because you're blocking the interrupt with that delay, which is inelegant. But who cares? It's going to work. If you, if you need to run like six servo motors for your project, you're going to have to figure out a better solution, though. Uh, but that is kind of what we do in the lab. You could also do it different ways. but that's the easy way. All right, so those are the applications uh, that we're going to use PWM for. Uh, next time, we're going to do just kind of a little bit more example uh, with the buzzer. All right, see you next time.